We live in a world where focus is more valuable than even your intelligence. How many hours a day you waste or how many hours a week you waste? And the classic answer is something like four to six hours a day. You know, inefficient studying, uh, watching things on YouTube that not only do you not want to watch, that you don't even care about, that make you feel horrible about watching after you're done, that's probably four hours right there. You know, you think, well, that's 20, 25 hours a week, it's 100 hours a month, that's two and a half full work weeks, it's half a year of work weeks per year. And if your time is worth $20 an hour, which is a radical underestimate, it's probably more like 50, if you think about it in terms of deferred wages, if you're wasting 20 hours a week, you're wasting $50,000 a year. If you look at many of the most cre creative and productive people on the planet, they are doing and working in such vastly different ways. Because if you want to achieve the results only 5% achieve, you've got to think and produce and behave like only 5% of the people on the planet. And the best people on the planet in terms of creativity and productivity are not spending their finest hours addicted to distraction. They are doing work that matters. They're not doing fake work, they're doing real work. And so if your life isn't everything it could be, you could ask yourself, well, what would happen if you just stopped wasting the opportunities that are in front of you? You'd be, who knows how much more efficient, 10 times more efficient, 20 times more efficient. That's the Pareto distribution. You have no idea how efficient, efficient people get. It's completely, it's off the charts. It's a constant storm to try to figure out what you're about, and you change. At 26, you're all about the hustle, you're gonna be a billionaire, this and that, and then you go to the bar one night and you fall in love, and it changes what you care about, right? And then you have a child, and then this happens, and then that happens. Things change. You just have to always consistently try to figure out what's driving you, and not because other people are watching, and not because that's what your dad wants, and not that because that's what you said was gonna happen, and it doesn't look like it, and your family's gonna judge you. You just have to be as real with yourself as possible, and that is a very difficult struggle, but when you're not, you create enormous vulnerability and unhappiness. A lot of us get to work and we spend our best hours on our least important activities. We get to work and we start checking our social feed. We get to work and we check our text. We get to work and we chit chat at the water cooler about the latest TV show that we watched last night. And research has shown that the morning hours are when you have the most focus, when you have the most energy, and when you have the most willpower. And so you want to use that first 90 minutes, you know, that is, that is game time, that's show time. It's more like you should understand how much potential there is within you to set that straight. And then you should do everything you can to manifest that in the world and it will set it straight. And that's better than self-esteem. It's like, you're, you're in a crooked, horrible position. Okay, fine, there's a lot of suffering and pain associated with that. Yeah, you can't just feel good about that because it's not good but you can do something about it. You can genuinely do something about it. Listen, you have to understand, just because you're a human being doesn't mean you're entitled to be a successful entrepreneur. They do what everybody else does in every genre. You want to be an NFL player, an NBA player, you try, you're not good enough, you do something else. You want to be a famous actor, you go to LA, you wait tables, you try to be on a show, it doesn't happen, you do something else. I don't know what they do, like, something else. Your environment is so important. What I'm suggesting to you as the second piece of technology to really 100 times your productivity is this. Install environments of tight bubbles of total focus. So install these tight bubbles of total focus and create these Menlo labs where you're, sort of, you're completely distraction free. And then you will find your brain will drop from the beta state into the alpha state where you will do your best work and get your best ideas. Stop doing the things that you know are wrong that you could stop doing, right? So it's, it's, a, fairly, it's a fairly limited attempt. First of all, we're not gonna say that you know what the good is or what the truth is in any ultimate sense. But we will presume that there are things that you're doing that for one reason or another you know are not in your best interests. There's something about them that you just know you should stop. They're kind of self-evident to you. 
I am encouraging you to really adopt this thinking protocol of becoming a minimalist. Even your home, fill it with just a few things. And especially your days, focus, focus, focus on just those few priorities that when you roll up your sleeves and go deep in them and invest what I call the trinity of your assets, your focus, your energy, and your willpower on those few things, they will allow you to birth art into the world, which will allow the world to call you world-class.